It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. This month's sponsor of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent, integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across almost all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on matters ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies and even individuals. Having served in over 750 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance program, visit this month's sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. Ongoing Monitoring of Third Parties One of the key themes from the 2020 update was the use of data and data analytics in a best practices compliance program. This has specific application to third parties. In sections entitled Risk-Tailored Resource Allocation, Control Testing, and Payment Systems, there were numerous questions specific to third parties. These questions made clear that the DOJ expects data analytics to be used to help detect or prevent bribery and corruption, where the primary sales force used by a company is third parties. A clear majority of FCPA violations and related enforcement actions have come from the use of third parties. While sham contracting has lessened in recent years, there are still related data analysis that can be performed to ascertain whether a third party is likely performing legitimate services for your company and is not a sham. There are several more complex analytics that can be run in combination to identify suspicious third parties. Some of the simplest can be to look for duplicate payments or erroneous payments. A key to moving from detection to prevention is the frequency of review. It is common for organizations to periodically review a year or more of accounts payable invoices at one time for errors or overpayments. Changing this from a one-time annual or biennial review to something that is done weekly, daily or weekly dramatically improves the value of such internal controls. This is more frequent. This more frequent preventative analysis is integral to a foundation of third-party audits. While many companies perform periodic look-back audits, ongoing monitoring also works to accomplish the same queries. This allows organizations to find duplicate payments or overpayments after the invoice has been approved but prior to disbursement. So instead of detecting some payments error three, six months after it is made, you prevent the money from leaving the company altogether. Duplicate invoices are a favorite mechanism of fraudsters. With several invoices, minuscule changes in them can lead to double payments. So although different wording on the face of an invoice uh, may uh, be small, it is often uh, paid out as a duplicate invoice. On the company side, both invoices and data can be used to help prevent such overpayments and identify when a second payment should not be made. Under such analysis, a compliance practitioner can utilize could be a comparison by using vendor name or other identifying information about the vendor. Now suppose there is the same name on an invoice in England as there is an elected official in Brazil. What happens when you have uh, executives of vendors with the same name? So you have a John Doe from a vendor in Brasilia, Brazil, and you have a John Doe from a vendor in Sao Paulo, Brazil. How do you differentiate those? How do you make sure that they are different? And how do you make sure none of them is a PEP in that country? It's only upon closer inspection that you can determine the answer to question one, that the middle names and ages are different and they're different addresses, but this requires an inspection. And without the further inspection, including the demographic information about vendors, consultants, or other third parties, and then comparing them to watch lists, such red flags are present for the compliance professional, but not often 
clear. Data analytics is designed to help you go from tens of thousands of maybes to a very small number of potential issues which could be which the, then can be researched individually. One of the important functions of any best practices compliance program is not only to follow the money, but to try and spot where pots of money could be created to pay bribes. Through comparison of invoices for similar items from among similar vendors, data analytics can un uncover overcharges and fraudulent billing. Continual transaction monitoring and data analysis can pr prove its value through more frequent review as individuals tend to perform better when they know they're being monitored. The techniques used in transaction monitoring for suspicious invoices can be easily translated into data analytics for anti-corruption. Software al allows a very large aggregation of suspicious payments, not only by day or by month, but also by vendor or even employee who may have keyed the invoices into your system. As these suspicious invoices begin to cluster by market, business unit, or person, a pattern forms, which can be the basis of additional inquiry. That is the value of data analytics. Analytics allows a compliance practitioner to sort and resort, combine and aggregate so that patterns may be more fully investigated. The final concept of finding patterns can be discerned through the aggregation of huge amounts of transactions is the next step for compliance programs. Yet data analysis does far more than simply allowing you to follow the money. It can be a part of your third party ongoing monitoring as well as allowing you to partner the information on third party who might come into your company where there is no proper compliance vetting. Such capabilities are clearly where you need to be headed. So what are today's three key takeaways? One, always remember to follow the money to see where a pot of money could be created. Two, transaction monitoring and techniques translate into data analysis. Three, don't forget to check names against PEPs and SDN lists going forward. And I would add as a parenthetical, always, always, always clear red flags which might pop up. If I could ask you to do so, would you pass on to at least one person this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance as I'm trying to expand my audience base for 31 days to a more effective compliance program? I hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up another topic in innovation in compliance. Thanks again for listening. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.